participants, and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I'm streaming to you live from beautiful Hungary here, situated in the Carpathian Basin of Central Europe. I hope everybody has had a fantastic week and looking forward to an even better weekend. In this class, we are looking at speaking part two, the long answer, the cue card. And we are looking at an original question presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS. Check us out there. That's academicenglishhelp.com. And for general IELTS, check us out at G-I-E-L-T-S help dot com general IELTS help dot com hi Amira nice to see you in this class as well hi Kyber hi Pachu hi Shiva many students already in uh, today at aehelp.com and g-i-e-l-t-s help.com you can access our premium package with a 20% discount using coupon code r4tyj which will give you access to over 100 hours of HD video lessons with strategies and tips to get those high band scores on the exam, as well as practice exams and an interactive course. So check us out there. You can also get our apps, Academic IELTS Help and General IELTS Help. The full app is included with your premium package when you use this code on the website. And if you have questions, just send me an email to adrian at aehelp.com. Frederick Bach says, Sir, your lectures are always good. Thank you, Frederick. I appreciate the feedback. That's awesome. I'm glad you're enjoying the lectures. Students, today speaking part two. Tomorrow, we'll have a task to start requested by one of our members. And then we'll get into some reading and more classes on Sunday as well. Just a quick peek at our websites. This is the academic, aehelp.com. You can click that big red button to use that promo code that I just gave you. And for general IELTS, it's the green background. Again, click that big red button to join us there. Let's get into speaking part two. This is a speaking class, so make sure to speak and repeat as much as possible increase your fluency. Now, a lot of students have good grammar, good vocabulary, but you do have to be fluent. It doesn't mean you need to speak fast, not necessarily as fast as I speak, but you have to speak fluently enough so that you're clear and coherent for the examiner. So, Pedram, your speaking exam was today and you feel it went really well. Awesome, Pedram. Again, I'll keep my fingers crossed that you get a great score and I love those happy faces. You're feeling good about it. That's usually a good sign. Uh, Pedram, do come back and share your score uh, with the rest of the group when you have it, okay? All right, students. So uh, speaking part two, it's a card. Uh, it happens about uh, five, six minutes into the interview, the speaking section. And the examiner will say, okay, that is the end of part one. Now we will continue with part two. For part two, here's a card with some questions. Don't turn it over yet. Here's a pencil or a pen and some note paper. You will have one minute to look at the questions on the card, think about your answers, take notes if you wish, and then you will have two minutes to speak. I will tell you when to start, when to stop. Go ahead, turn over the card. Your one minute preparation begins now. So you turn over the card and this is what you see. Part two, talk about a person you worked on a project with. Who is this person? What was the project? What uh, did they do on the project? Let's just correct that. So what did they do on the project? And would you work on a project with this person again? Why or why not? Okay, so remember in past classes I said that you have to read this part of the card twice. So let's read that again. Talk about a person you worked on a project with. Okay, it's really important. You need to make sure that you're talking about 
the correct ideas and not going off topic or not close ideas. You need to talk about the exact idea, okay? So once you do that, you have to identify whether you're talking about a person, place, event, object, or idea. In this case, what are you talking about? So are you talking about a person, place, object, event, or an idea? Okay, each of these categories has some specific concepts that you have to include in your response. So when you're talking, for example, about an object, you should say where you got it, how it works, what it looks like, its importance to you, okay? So Kyber says that here you're talking about a person and you should discuss the person's appearance, their personality and what they do, okay? So here, Kyber says this is a person and a person means you need to talk about the appearance, you need to talk about their personality and their personality backed by action. Everybody agree? Let's see if we have some other. Aha, E Donutter says, oh, you're also talking about an event here. And E Donutter, you're being clever uh, because that's partly right. So you are also talking about an event. Plus event. When, who, what happened and your opinion, okay? And you're right, here it's a little bit of both. So primarily, mostly, you're talking about a person. Why do we know that? Because the subject is about a person. So talk about a person you worked on a project with. But when we look at the questions carefully, notice the second one, what was the project? So that's hinting towards the event as well. So you're focusing mostly on the person, but also a little bit on the event, on the actual doing the project, okay? So this is a little bit of a trickier one because you do have to focus on both. All right, so you realize this. A good student, when they flip over the card, when they read it carefully, they will realize, okay, I have to focus on this person, but I also have to consider the situation, the event, okay? That's important. If you just talk about your project here, okay, that's a really dangerous situation. If you spend two minutes talking about your project and you talk very little about the person, your score will go down. This has to focus more about the person, okay? So you realize that and now you come up with a few good ideas to choose from, okay? So the next step is... Think of at least two to three different people that you have done projects with. Or imagine them if you're having difficulty coming up with something real. So give me some suggestions, students. Okay. So give me some suggestions of people who you worked on projects with. Okay, that's what you have to do. Okay, so let's see uh, what you come up with. Okay, Ferdov says, how about your coworker? All right, so one suggestion is coworker. And Ferdov, what kind of a project uh, did you do with them? So what kind of a project did you do with your coworker? Okay, you have to think of the project as well. So it's two elements here. Bokhbin says professor, but again, make sure to think about the project also in this case. Okay, so what's the project? E. Donator says uh, classmate. And what's the project? Okay, before you decide which one will be the easiest and most original for you to talk about, You should think about the project as well, okay? Kadiza Begum says, how about an English teacher with my IELTS success? That's a pretty good one, I like it.
Yeah, I really like that one. That's great. Uh, Lepuj uh, Nun says, how about wife and house? That's a good one. Okay. Taylor Reese says, sister. The project is architectural visualization. Very good. Okay, Marasa says, how about a classmate and a science project solar cell? Okay, so I'm going to add that to classmate. All right, good. Uh, Tunde, Adayemi, very good. How about mom and cooking, making a meal? That's good. I like it. Mom and a cake, for example. Baking a cake. Chocolate cake project. I love it. Getting hungry. Okay, very nice. All right, now you're in the right direction. Let's see. What else do we have coming up? Okay, Yalin says, best friend played music with me. Okay, so Yalin, that would be best friend concert. Okay. All right. So we have some good one. Uh, professor, thesis, say. Okay. Coworker, let's say new application. All right. So we have a good set here. Uh, <clears throat> all right, now again, for those of you who uh, haven't been here before, you only need about three. So this is maybe too many, but if you can think of lots, hey, that's fine, okay. Um, so let's uh, label these. So this will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, let's take a vote for today's topic uh, answer. So which one do you think out of these would be the easiest to talk about and something that's original that not everybody is talking about? Just give me the number one, two, three, four, five or six, seven, and then we'll go with that. So Charlie says number four, how about English teacher working together on IELTS success? Some of you are saying coworker, new application. Some of you are saying six, which is mom and baking a cake. Ooh, lots of numbers coming up now. All right, great. Okay, I'll give you my feedback and then uh, we will start up with one of these. So I wouldn't do this one, okay? I wouldn't do that one because it's difficult. I know many of you thought that would be a good idea, but this one is difficult. Uh, because what's the new application? What did you do with your coworker? You don't know them as well. The coworker is probably less familiar for you. Okay. Same thing with professor and thesis. I think this would be very difficult uh, to clearly explain to the examiner in a two minute time period, unless you have practice doing that in English, unless you practice talking to other people about your thesis project with your professor, this would be difficult. Okay. Uh, solar cell classmate, I think that's unique. I think you could do that. Just make sure you have the vocabulary to talk about solar cells in English. Okay. English teacher with IELTS success, I think that's great. I think you could do a really good job of that. It's unique. It's in context. So that's fantastic. Uh, wife and talking about your house decoration. It's not bad. Uh, there might be a few other students choosing this one. This might be a popular answer. So I might skip that one. There might be a lot of people talking about how they decorated or bought their house with their wife or their husband. Okay. I think mom and baking a cake would be a really good idea as well. And best friend in concert is okay. Uh, it could be a little bit difficult to talk about music and how that happens. So uh, let's go with uh, number four for today because I think that will work for everybody to talk about. Okay. So now, um, when we do this, it's a good idea always to think about some words. Okay. That can be useful in your speaking. So let's take some notes and let's think of some useful vocabulary for this response. Okay. In your one minute, you should definitely write notes. You should use the full minute 
and you should think about usable notes. Okay, so notes that you can use. Also, think about vocabulary. So I haven't taught this before, but you should quickly uh, scan your brain for useful vocabulary for this topic. Okay, so useful vocabulary. Uh, what would be some useful vocabulary for work together on a project? So what are some common words that we use in English to describe this situation, work together on a project? How can we say that in another way? Just give me any word that comes to mind here, okay? All right, so Ruchi says, how about the word teamwork or the collocation teamwork? Yeah, that could be good. Um, Peya says cooperative. Yeah, it's one word. You don't need the uh, hyphen there, uh, Peya. Uh, e Donor says partnership. Suminder. Uh, Huda and Taylor Reese all thought of an Balbir collaborate. Yeah, collaborate actually means to work together on some kind of project. So this is an excellent word to think about. Okay. Uh, Amira says, how about the word brainstorming? Very good. That's when you sit together with people and come up with ideas. Okay. Very good. All right, um, what other? Membership, Payal, yeah, that's okay. I don't, I didn't see this one, but um, how about the word communicate? Okay, we communicate as well. Uh, Sainu, conspire is not good because conspire means that you're working together towards a bad goal. So conspire is not a word that I would use here. Okay. All right. Uh, now, how about some um, vocabulary for personality traits for working together? Okay. So personality traits for collaborating. What vocabulary comes to mind when you think about personalities of people or characteristics of people when they're collaborating. So we, here we have teamwork. I'll give you a nice collocation to start you off. Team player. Okay. When we say team player, it means that the person is good at working together with others. Okay. Pia says, how about extrovert? Yeah. So there's social. Uh, Pia says, uh, intelligence, team spirit, optimistic is a very nice word by Yeksan. Okay, dynamic is good. Critical thinker is a good one. Somebody wrote that. Pachu, very good. Patient, yeah. Great listener, I saw that. Okay. Uh, Sayan says, how about bilingual? Or versatile is a nice one as well. Uh, Abdul Rashid, very nice word. Diligent. Does anybody know the meaning of diligent? Diligent means hardworking. Okay. So diligent. Very good. All right. Nice. Nice. Quran, common, collected. Good. All right. So these kinds of words should be kind of running through your brain as you are preparing in the one minute to uh, begin your response, okay? Rajveer says, how about punctual? Yeah, I agree, Rajveer. Rajveer there's nothing worse than uh, working together on a project when a person is not punctual. Punctual, students, uh, if that's new for some of you, it means be on time, okay? All right, fantastic. And so we chose... Uh, English teacher preparing for IELTS, okay. So, give me some notes.
Give me some notes that you think could be useful to look at and to use during your two minutes when you're answering this cue card. Okay, give me some notes, any notes that come to mind. We'll just write them down and then we'll use them. So not vocabulary, but actual usable notes for the response. Okay. So good correction and feedback is what somebody just wrote. I think that would be a usable note. Absolutely. Okay. Now, when you're writing your notes, students, practice doing it in the same order as the uh, category description. So first talk about the appearance, then the personality, then backed up by action. Okay. So let's talk about the appearance. What does your English tutor look like? Okay. And give me some quick notes for that. Maybe 180 centimeters, well built, brown hair, blue eyes, and well dressed. Okay. So again, it's always a good idea to just quickly describe the person you're talking about, what they look like, so that your listener can imagine them, they can picture them, it's not just a ghost, okay? All right, Pavan says the person has a French beard, <laughs> maybe Pavan, okay? Short blonde hair, fair skin, yeah, it's done, good, okay, all of those work. All right, now, uh, personality. Give me personality. I'll give you one here. Patient. Listen to long conversation. Okay, for example. Funny. Okay, Violet Newen, funny. Uh, now, remember, when you write any note that's personality, you should immediately follow that with an example of that. Funny. So start lesson with joke. Okay. So anytime you think about a personality, always put the action right after it. Because when you're speaking, you don't just want to jump from one personality. So you don't want to say, well, my teacher is a really patient guy. Also, he's really funny and energetic and super hardworking. That's kind of like, whoa. Um, you have to go step by step. When you say the personality, you back it up by action. My English teacher is very patient. We had many long conversations where I talked for two, three minutes at a time, made many mistakes. He never interrupted me. He listened until I finished. As well, he's a really funny guy. He started each lesson with a good joke to lighten the mood and help me focus on my studies. He was hard working. I had at least five to six classes with him each week and he never canceled. All right. That's what will get you those high band scores. So personality backed by actions. Okay. Rajvir says, excellent teacher solved all of my doubts in grammar. Okay. Rajvir, I would do that a little bit differently. I would say, um, educated, answered all grammar questions. Okay. Educated, I think is closer to, uh, being able to give, uh, responses to all of your grammar questions. Okay. So Mario Kondo says, well spoken or articulated. Those are synonyms and, um, you have to still give the action, Mario. So articulated or well-spoken doesn't include the action still. Okay. Suja says emotionally intelligent throughout my three months, never got angry, right? Okay. Actions, students think of actions. All right. Okay. Um, so we have a few here. 
And I will add more as, as long as you include the action. Okay, Vi Mint says dependable, always aware of what he is doing. Okay, again, that's not Vi, that's still not a clear action when you say that. So dependable or punctual, as we said, showed up for every session five minutes in advance. Okay, so that would be dependable or punctual. All right. Sianu says kidnapper. Uh, I don't get it, Sianu. It doesn't fit. Okay. Uh, Raman says creative mind. Taught new reading strategies for true, false, not given, for example. Okay. All right. Now, remember, you're working together with this person on this project. So tutor is better than uh, saying a teacher that's working with everybody in the class. All right. Um, so we have these notes here. Is this enough? Is this good? Or should I be doing something else for these notes to be really useful? Okay. Should I be doing something else? And hopefully many of you are thinking yes, because I should also be thinking of the event, right? So the event is getting ready for IELTS. And again, here, the event, what is it? Preparing to get band nine, right? Let's go for the stars or let's reach for the stars. All right. Um, what else should I write there? So event, preparing to get band nine. What else? I should maybe write something like um, July 2019. That's when we started. Who was it? My teacher. Let's give him a name, Mike. Mike and I, private tutor. Okay. Murasa says six lectures per week. Let's make it six sessions per week. Okay. It's a project that you're working together on, which means you're getting ready for this. Okay. All right. Ready and confident, you're feeling. Okay, so we're looking good. Uh, now we want to come up with our first sentence before you before your one minute is up. Okay, so before your one minute prep time is up, come up with your first sentence. So let's do that together. Um, while you come up with your first sentence, Let's just quickly review the card, the questions, and our notes. So talk about a person you worked on a project with. Who is this person? What was the project? What did they do on the project? Would you work on a project with this person again? Why or why not? We decided the project is getting ready for the IELTS exam. We discussed that this person is 180 centimeters, well-built, brown hair, blue eyes, well-dressed, gave good correction and feedback, he's patient, he's funny, educated, punctual, creative. You're preparing for a band nine, 2011. It's Mike and you, it's a private tutor, six sessions per week. Got you ready and confident. All right, give me your first Sentence. So when the examiner says your one minute preparation time is up, please begin speaking. And then you don't just look at the examiner for 10 seconds and go, thank you for giving me this chance to talk about a project and a person that I worked together with, because that will not get you a high score. Okay. So you have to start right away. 
As soon as they say begin speaking, you should immediately start speaking. And it should be accurate. Okay, it shouldn't be, I've worked with many people on many projects in the past. That will not get you a good band score. All right. So Mechwish, Ali says, a person with whom I have worked with on a project is Mike, who is my IELTS instructor. Mechwish, that's really nice. Okay, a little bit of present perfect there, Mechwish. So a person whom I recently collaborated on a project with. Remember, we're going for a band nine, right, girls and guys? Mike is training us for that band nine. So a person whom I recently collaborated with on a project is my IELTS tutor, Mike. It's a nice one. All right, Sainu again, it's too general. So Sainu says, in life, we always meet many different people, but sometimes you meet someone who is always willing to help. Sainu, it sounds good, but it's not good because the question is talk about a person you worked on a project with, not talk about meeting people in life. Uh, and you, as you're talking about the examiner, it doesn't work well, okay? All right. Ruchi says, I'd like to talk about a time when I started preparing for IELTS. At first, IELTS seemed like a situation where I was between a rock and a hard place. Uh, Ruchi, it's not bad, but the focus is the person, not the project. So you should talk about the person uh, immediately, even before you get into the project. Okay, The project should come after you mention the person. Okay. Uh, Nidhe says, there are many projects I worked with during my engineering study. From that, I'd like to talk about my final project, which I did with three friends. It's not bad, Nidhe. I would take out the first sentence, that there are many projects. So Nidhe, if you want to increase your band score, just get right into the right topic. So during my engineering study, my final year project, I did with three of my friends. One of them, okay, because it's one person that you're talking about here, and then you get right into it. All right. Okay, good. So <clears throat> here we go. Uh, the examiner says, okay, your one minute preparation time is up. Please begin speaking. A person whom I recently collaborated with on a project is my IELTS tutor, Mike. Okay. Whom is okay here because I'm the subject and Mike is the object. So whom is fine. Okay, uh, so give me the next sentence. Remember your notes, you can look at your notes and then continue on. So now your examiner knows, okay, you're about to discuss this uh, project to get this nice high band score that you worked on together with your IELTS teacher. So what do I do? What's my next sentence? What should I give? to my examiner so that my communication is clear. Okay, remember, hint, hint, when you're talking about people, you should always spend a few seconds on this, especially when that person has no idea who this person is. Manuel Gomez says, describe Mike. Yeah, and what do you start with? So what should you say? <clears throat> yeah, Rucci says he's 180 centimeters tall, has blue eyes, and is well built. You use the present tense, Rucci, when you're describing their appearance because hopefully they're still alive, so they still are that person. Okay, so Rucci says, well, you should just quickly describe what this person looks like so that your examiner can imagine him. Mike is about 180 uh, centimeters tall. Fair skinned, blue eyes, and short brown hair. He is always well dressed. In slacks. Whoop. 
slacks and a blazer, maybe something like that. Okay, so now we can kind of imagine what he looks like, all right? Jagar says he is around 180 centimeters tall with blue eyes, calm and cool natured. Okay, good. King Dip says always with a smile on his face. Good, sure. So now we've described what he looks like. Now what should I do? So what should follow this? So a person who I recently collaborated on a project with is my IELTS tutor, Mike. Mike's about 100 centimeters tall, fair skin, blue eyes, and short brown hair. He is always well-dressed in slacks and a blazer. Sure. What would make sense here? Let's see. What do you think should come after that? So we now know what he looks like. We now know what Mike looks like logically. What do you think would help the examiner understand you the most? So Yalin says, we have been studying English since June. So Yalin, yeah, what you're suggesting is to introduce the project. Very good, Ferdov. So Ferdov says, introduce the project. Yeah, that's absolutely. the right direction okay so let's do that let's introduce the project before we get into mike's personality so give me some sentences to introduce the project remember here are our notes preparing to get a band nine so this is the event part right because the question if you're not sure you can always look at your cue card the question says what was the project so who is this person what was the project okay so now that's what you should do give it context what was the project so Angwin Hong says he helped me a lot in my IELTS preparation giving feedback eDonor says he's not only a good looking person but he's also the best Teacher in the world owing to his teaching methods for IELTS. Yeah, you donor, that can come a little bit later. Carolina says, something I'd like to mention is that Mike is an amazing tutor. We've been working since July together and we've made great progress. Yeah, uh, students, what I suggest doing is use the key subject words. In this case, the key subject word is project. So you should use that at this point because it will show your examiner that you're really focused on what the actual card is asking. It's very important for high band scores that you're focusing specifically on the card. So Mike and I engaged on my IELTS preparation project back in July of 2019. So that's what I would do is I would give it context and here I would immediately use the word project, especially here because otherwise the examiner might be going, okay, did this student not understand the card and they're just talking about a person who taught them something? Okay, if I'm your examiner and you don't use the word project, I might think that you didn't understand the card clearly and you're just talking about a person who taught you some information. Maybe you didn't understand the word project. But if you say this, Mike and I engaged on my IELTS preparation project back in July of 2019, then as the examiner, I will think, oh, okay, so you see that as your project, which is fine, you can do that, okay? Yeah, so Mackwish is, I think, asking this question right now. Is it a project, taking IELTS classes? Yes, Mackwish, if you see that as your project, because a project means you have a goal in mind, and your goal is 
for that band nine. If you can explain that, sure, Mechwish, then it's a project. So you can say, Mike and I engaged on my Alice preparation project back in July of 2019. The goal of this project was to prepare me or to prepare enough so that I would get a band nine result in order to continue my PhD studies in the faculty of law at Harvard from September of 2020, right? So always clarity. Give as much clarity as possible. Taylor Reese says, I have joined forces with this particular person to tackle this project because of his ability to scrutinize information and present it in ways that is easy to grasp and interpret into visual data. Taylor Reese, that is some beautiful band nine level writing or communication in this case, okay? And now you're explaining why you chose this person and what they're doing, right? Don't forget the questions on the card. So again, your notes and your card, those are your tools. You need to use them throughout the preparation and the two minutes. So what was the project? What did they do on the project? So in this case, what did Mike do in your IELTS preparation project, right? Okay. So, Kush, have a great day. See you next time. All right. Um, let's uh, add some more sentences. So far, let's review what we have and then let's add more sentences. So speak and repeat. A person whom I recently collaborated on a project with is my IELTS tutor, Mike. Mike is about 180 centimeters tall, fair skin, blue eyes, and short brown hair. He is always well-dressed in slacks and a blazer. Mike and I engaged on my IELTS preparation project back in July of 2019. The goal of this project was to prepare enough so that I would get a band nine result in order to continue my PhD studies in the Faculty of Law at Harvard from September of 2020. Okay. Uh, E-Donator is asking if I don't make a lot of eye contact in this part of the exam, is it okay? Yeah, E-Donator, it's okay if you're looking at your notes in your paper and then you're looking up. But when you look up, you should make eye contact. Those other times when you're looking to think or looking at your notes or your cue card, it's totally fine as long as you keep talking and expressing yourself clearly. Okay? Okay, so Paya says, one of my friends, Disha, recommended Mike uh, since he is a dynamic, diligent, uh, and social person. Very nice, Paya. That will work. So, my friend uh, Disha recommended Mike as he is a dynamic, diligent, and social person. Okay, now if you do that, so Paya, when you do this, when you give one, two, three different personality traits in one sentence, uh, you should immediately go through these and back each one of them up with actions, okay? So you should say something like, indeed, he is very versatile, as I found out throughout our sessions. When I didn't understand certain grammar, like present perfect, he explained it another way. 
Also, we had six or more sessions every week, and he always prepared notes in advance. Okay, so what I'm doing here, students, is I'm making sure that if I tell the examiner or my listener uh, personality traits like dynamic and diligent, then I have to give some kind of an action that shows what that is. So when I didn't understand certain grammar like present perfect, he explained it another way. Okay, now I get what you mean when you say he's dynamic. Also, we had six or more sessions every week, and he always prepared notes in advance, never complained about how hard he has to work. So he's diligent, okay? So that's what you're doing. You're explaining. Uh, versatile, Mina, in this case, is a synonym for dynamic, to show my lexical resource, all right? Nidhe says, during our work, Mr. Mike continuously improved my vocabulary to avoid uh, common words as well. He helped me to improve my pronunciation by making me practice speaking uh, on a daily basis. Okay, so Nidhe, you might say that he's strict. All right. Son, good luck with your exam tomorrow. So good. Um, furthermore... He introduced me to some other students whom I could practice my speaking with. Okay, this is representing the fact that he's a social person. Okay. Let's see what else you can talk about, Mike. Paya says, one aspect that amazed me about Mike most uh, was the freedom he gave me to call him anytime, whenever it was, whether it was day or night, and he never felt disturbed. Okay, good. All right, so we're moving along nicely here. Now, um, let's say I get a little bit stuck. What should I do here? Oh, no, I'm stuck. And I'm thinking, oh, okay, should I just uh, repeat myself? Should I talk more about Mike's personality? What should I do? So what do I do? I'm a little bit stuck. I'm like, oh, no, is the uh, examiner going to stop me or interrupt me now? Don't panic. Always stay confident. What should I do? What's my next step? Again, my goal is to get the best score possible for this part too. So Flower Sun says, look back at your notes. And Kevin Bowie says, make sure to answer the cue card, right? Read the cue card. Yeah, absolutely. That's always a good idea. Students, here's a really important tip. You should read the cue card at least once while you're speaking in the two minutes. So this is a really important tip. Make sure to look at the cue card at least once during your response time to be sure that you are on topic and you answered all of the questions, okay? Way too often, way too many times I see candidates not answering all of the questions on the cue card. And that's not good because if you don't answer all the questions on the cue card, it's almost for sure that you're going to lose at least half a band score in your speaking, okay? So you have to answer all of the questions. So here we go, part two, talk about a person you worked on a project with. Who is this person? Good, we did that. What was the project? Okay, talked about that. What did they do on the project? We kind of talked about that. Would you work on a project with this person again? Why or why not? All right, um, let's focus a little bit on these last two. Let's start with this one. What did they do on the project? 
So give me a few sentences that clearly answers that question for the examiner. So what did Mike do on this project with me? Okay, give me some sentences. Let me help you start. Mike not only worked hard to help improve my speaking vocabulary and fluency, but he also taught me advanced grammar and critical thinking. Okay? Something like that. All right. So Carolina says, Mike and I worked on my speaking abilities very hard. Exactly. Good. What else did Mike do? Nice. I like Pratishka. So he helped me regain my confidence. Whenever I fell down, Mike always had a funny joke and motivational advice to help me regain my confidence. Nice. Okay, so I'm using what you're giving me and I'm building it out a little bit more. Okay. Uh, Ruchi says, let's go to the next one. Definitely, I will work with him in the future again. So definitely I would, because it's hypothetical, definitely I would work together with him again in the future if I were to need help preparing for a, an English language exam as I felt his contribution made IELTS seem like a cakewalk. Cakewalk means easy, okay? There's an interesting history behind that idiom if you ever look into it, okay? So as I felt his contribution make, made IELTS seem like a cakewalk, good. Anything else there? Rajveer Singh says, Mike prepared notes on different sections of the reading, writing, listening, and speaking sections, which were invaluable for me to achieve my goal on this project. Rajveer, I really like how you brought back the concept of project. So we're emphasizing that for the examiner to make sure that he's not confused and we know that we're talking about a project here. Very good. Okay. I'll add it into mine. There you go. All right. Okay, students, looking sweet for that high band score. Uh, let's uh, repeat, speak and repeat after me, okay? You've done a great job. You got the idea. I'll review what are some important points from this class. So here we go. Uh, repeat, speak, Read nice and loud. A person whom I recently collaborated on a project with is my IELTS tutor, Mike. Mike is about 180 centimeters tall, fair skin, blue eyes, and short brown hair. He is always well-dressed in slacks and a blazer. Mike and I engaged on my IELTS preparation project back in July of 2019. The goal of this project was to be prepared enough so that I would get a band nine result in order to continue my PhD studies in the Faculty of Law at Harvard from September of 2020. My friend Disha recommended Mike as he is dynamic, diligent, and a social person. Indeed, he's very versatile, as I found out throughout our sessions. When I didn't understand certain grammar, like present perfect, he explained it another way. Also, we had six or more sessions every week, 
and he always prepared notes in advance. Furthermore, he introduced me to some other students whom I could practice my speaking with. Mike not only worked hard to help improve my speaking vocabulary and fluency, but he also taught me advanced grammar and critical thinking. Whenever I felt down, Mike always had a funny joke and a motivational advice to help me regain my confidence. Definitely, I would work together with him again in the future on any study project if I were to need help preparing for an English language exam, as I felt his contributions made IELTS seem like a cakewalk. All right, I'll make a couple corrections in there, some typos and things, but overall, that's what you would want to produce as a response to this cue card for your band nine response or answer, okay? So again, a couple of points to pay attention to students. Uh, your part two will be about a person, place, event, object. Um, and sometimes it will be a little bit of a combination of two of these, okay? Make sure to read the card carefully, especially this part here. Make sure to focus on these questions specifically. Don't go off topic and don't generalize, okay? And then you will get a great score, right? Collect key vocabulary in your mind before you begin that you can use in your speaking, like collaboration. Students, that's it for this class. You've done a great job. I hope that has shed some light on how to use your one minute preparation time wisely and how to structure your response uh, so that you're clear and coherent for the examiner. Uh, again, you can see lots more videos on our websites in the premium packages, aehelp.com, gieltshelp.com. And you can use this code uh, for a 20% discount, R4TYJ. So go to the websites, check it out. If you like what you see, sign up, help yourself do better with effective strategies. That's it for now. Tomorrow, I'll be back with some uh, task two for members and reading for the all chat class. Have a wonderful uh, start to your weekend, and hopefully I will see many of you tomorrow. Be confident, study hard, and you will reach your IELTS project goal as well. Bye for now, everyone. Much love from Budapest.